Dear comrades in arms, dear listeners and spectators all over the world, in the years after 1989, when the German Democratic Republic had been handed over to the Federal Republic of Germany, we launched our association, the Anstifter, which could be translated as the instigators or the agitators in Dresden. In these years of transition, the people we met in the eastern part of Germany were accustomed to look over their shoulders three times before they started saying something. That was a measure of precaution in a totalitarian state which practiced a sophisticated system of surveillance and oppression of its citizens. Thirty years later, I would rather give the same advice to take three times that look over your shoulder as a measure of precaution to all people who are engaged in civic society activities for democracy, human rights and freedom of speech. First, to keep enough corona distance to stay well and fit. Secondly, because of our friends from the intelligence services and their undercover agents, we greet them and I am very sorry that they have to work on Sundays because of us. And thirdly, because of the taxman. Several hundred people elected Julian Assange for this year's Stuttgart Peace Prize Award worth 5,000 euro. And you all know why. Assange was one of the most important journalists in the world. In 2006, he founded the WikiLeaks platform. One of the first documents that sent shock waves around the world was a video from the Iraq that could have been taken from one of these violent video war games. But it was reality. From a helicopter, American soldiers killed Iraqi civilians adults and children like rats, among them two journalists from the Reuters press agency. Julian Assange still lives and we will do everything that he will survive his severe conditions in prison. Award-winning Julian Assange has important forerunners since 2003 we award this Stuttgart Peace Prize and for example one of the awardees was whistleblower Edward Snowden, then the American soldier Agustin Aguayo who refused to fight in the Gulf War as a conscientious objector, the relief organization Sea Watch and women from the concentration camp of Genshagen who survived this Daimler-Benz uh, concentration camp. Asli Erdogan, a suppressed Turkish writer, or Juliana Skrena, an investigative journalist from Italy. We who live in relative economic wealth, we who live in relative security, we have to look around and examine things three times. When human beings are persecuted, humiliated, beaten, when our brothers and sisters are tortured and threatened to death everywhere in the world. It's up to us to have a closer look at things. It's up to us to cry out against injustice and terror. It's up to us to double check and verify every information. It's up to us to seek truthfulness beyond the official propaganda. And we must also ask ourselves three times whether we have done enough. Let yourself instigate to an uprising of the decent people, to a movement for human rights. 
The Stuttgart Peace Prize teaches us the art of moving on in little steps. It is the art of having patience, resilience, perseverance. It is the art of using heart and mind. It is the art of, to stand up and cry out loud. It is the art of taking a risk for freedom and democracy, for human rights, for disenfranchised and humiliated human beings all over the world, for people like Julian Assange. Thank you. And now we would like to welcome Stella Morris. You can see her here on screen. And Hi. Stella is the partner of uh, Julian Assange and also the mother of uh, two children, of their common children. And uh, I am very glad now to talk to you in person, Stella. And first of all, we would like to know how are you? How are you doing? Hi, thank you, Stuttgart. Can you hear me? Um, I'm very pleased to be able to speak here today uh, on behalf of Julian. I spoke to him this morning and I'm always happy to be able to give him some good news. And uh, he was very heartened um, about winning the Stuttgart Peace Prize. And I never thought I'd say this, but unfortunately I can relate to the people of East Germany during the Cold War. Um, because we've been through a lot and we continue to be in uh, an aberration of, of uh, democracy um, in this situation. Uh, as you know, there were plans to assassinate Julian in the embassy. Uh, there were instructions to steal our baby's DNA. Um, there were instructions to put a person full time to follow me. And I've been fearful for my life and certainly for Julian's. Uh, Stella, you might not see and, uh, it, but yes, yes, yeah, you might not see it, but here in Stuttgart, there are more than 500 people together um, to to this today's uh, demonstration, and um, this this is more than we expected. Makes me very happy. And, um, uh, yeah. Yes, I'm very heartened that the people of Germany um, seem to understand um, instinctively the political um, nature of this case. And uh, I think that the UK and the US are really losing their way uh, because uh, the most famous political prisoner in the world is, is Julian Assange. And he sits in a UK prison um, at the behest of the US. And the reason is that he embarrassed the US, he embarrassed the US government um, for the abuses which he evidenced. And those abuses include many crimes and state crimes, crimes of the highest order, which uh, continue to go unpunished. And so it's that embarrassment um, that necessitates uh, his incarceration. So for every day that Julian remains in prison, the UK and the US hand a propaganda victory to China, for example, to Azerbaijan. And they're picking up on this when they are criticized um, at the UN or by the BBC. They come back and they say, well, what about Julian Assange? And the, um, the argument is unbeatable because there is no place in a democracy for a journalist to be in prison. For what has been done to Julian, this is not, this is an aberration. 
and how uh, how is he doing at the moment? Can you tell us something about his health? Well, he's he's very physically weakened. Um, he's in a in a prison cell in Balmarsh, which is um, well known in the in the UK. They call it the Guantanamo of Britain. Um, it houses uh, murderers and um, very serious criminals. One in five prisoners there are murderers, convicted of murder. And um, uh, there's been a COVID outbreak uh, there in the past month. Julian Selbock block is the one um, that's affected. And there are approximately 160 prisoners there and 65 have tested positive. So obviously um, he and, and his family are extremely uh, anxious about um, his health and the way the prison deals uh, an outbreak is by uh, keeping prisoners in their cells um, day and night. Uh, they can't even go to have a shower. Um, and, and this has been going on for, for nearly three weeks. Um, but I must say that the real horror is the possibility of Julian's extradition to the US, where the US has all but said that it will send Julian to a supermax prison, that it will place him under something called special administrative measures, which means he can't communicate to anyone, uh, that his lawyers cannot say anything, uh, or they risk prosecution. And it is something that is extremely rare. There are only about 20 or 30 people in the U.S. that are under these restrictions. Um, and they want to do that uh, to Julian and put him in, in a jail called, a prison called uh, Florence, Colorado, ADX, which is where they have El Chapo. And so what they want to do is they want to bury Julian forever. They want to basically kill him to the world. They don't need to they don't need capital punishment if they can bury him for the rest of his days. And that's what they want to do. Um I've 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 put out a couple of appeals on social media recently. I've appealed to President Trump to pardon Julian because Julian is a force for freedom. He's a force for democracy and for a force against manipulation. And this is not a right-left issue. Um, this is a matter of core values. And this prosecution has actually been very controversial, both with the Republican uh, administration and the, Demo the Democratic administration in the US before it. And in fact, uh, two uh, prosecutors who were working on the case resigned um, when, when Julian was indicted. And that's because there is a qualitative shift with his indictment. I know that Julian is often um, compared to Snowden or Manning, who are very brave individuals, but they are whistleblowers. And Julian is a publisher, and so this case is completely different. This case criminalizes the publication of information that is true and that is in the public interest. And so we have to ask ourselves, where do we end up if this prospers? War crimes will always be um, classified secret if they've been covered up. They're criminalizing the most important journalism that one can possibly have. Is, I've also appealed to whistleblowers to step forward and say, tell the world what they know, because there's been a concerted effort that has put Julian in Belmarsh prison for soon to be two years. And in fact, tomorrow, the 7th of December, will mark 10 years since Julian lo lost his freedom 
Um, he was arrested on the 7th of December 2010, and he has not been a free man since. And the next day, on the 8th of December, the Independent newspaper in the UK published an article that said that the U US was already in talks with the involved governments about Julian's extradition. I'm also calling on the UK government to open a dialogue with the US and Australia to find a solution to this, because it's not desirable for any government. This prosecution has very serious consequences for all the countries involved. Uh, it is a, a constitutional threat uh, to all the co countries involved, including to Europe, um, because it means that foreign secrecy laws are being enforced um, within the jurisdiction and limit the ability to report um, in the UK and um, consequently because the UK was in, the Euro in Europe at the time and the case will probably go to the European Court of Human Rights um, this has consequences to how reporters and journalists can report um, in Europe, and it has consequences for the First Amendment in the U.S. And so, um, the case should be should be dismissed because it is far too dangerous, um, and it has a serious. Uh, it implies a serious undermining of freedom and democracy. And so, just to conclude, I'm. I'm very happy uh, also that Julian's work has been recognized um, in relation to peace because Julian can be credibly credited with ending the US occupation of Iraq. And the reason is that WikiLeaks published a cable about the Ishaki massacre in a village in Iraq called Ishaki of a family that was killed, um, shot in the head, including. Um, three children under five. And when WikiLeaks published this cable, it was debated in the Iraqi parliament, and it became impossible for the Iraqi government to renew the immunity agreement it had with the United States. And consequently, Obama withdrew the troops um, from Iraq at the end of uh, 2011. And so, like as Julian says, um, if wars can be started by lies, peace can be started by truth. Well, Stella, thank you. From my part, there will be a Heike Hansel to greet you, so please uh, stay <laughs> in line. And what I want to say also is, that usually we organize a gala in the Theaterhaus in Stuttgart to award the Peace Prize. The Stuttgart Peace Prize, we couldn't do it this year because of Corona, but we will do everything that we can do it next year in maybe February or March, and then we hopefully invite Stella and Julian, a free Julian, to our gala. It would be an honor. Thank you.